Okay, today I want to talk about three different methods. Element from point, elements from point, and carry position from point. Now, the first two, the element and elements, those two work on any of the modern browsers. Carry position from point only works currently in Firefox and Safari, so be careful with that one. Now, the point of this is to be able to use click listeners or any mouse event where you're clicking on part of the screen and when you do that, so let's jump over to the browser here, when I click on one of these, based on the position of my click, what I want to know is what's the element or what is the stack of elements from here up to the body that contain what I just clicked on. So, a couple of useful things. This will give me the single element that's closest to my click, so whatever's triggering the click. This one will give me the stack. The carry position, this is going to give me um, same sort of idea. It's going to give me one element, but from that element, it'll even start at the text node, and then we go from there to the parent containing element. So if you wanted to put style properties or something on it, and it will also give you the carry position. So basically where your cursor is, like if I click and drag, it started here and ended here, but a single click will tell me if I'm in position one, two, three, or so on. All right, so let's jump back to the code and take a look at how this works. Now, I've added a few CSS styles. I've got a class called clicked, and I'm adding it to body, main, heller, <laughs> header, paragraph, and h1, just with different background colors. If we look at the structure of the page, the h1's inside the header, paragraphs are inside of main, so if I click on one with the first example, element from point, I'm just gonna highlight the one element that I'm clicking on, and if I use elements, it'll highlight paragraph, main, and body. And I've got different colors for each of those. Okay, our DOM content loaded script, we're just looking for all the paragraphs and the H1, looping through those and adding click listeners to them. It's going to call our function called click. Here's the clicked function. And we're going to look at all this code in just a moment. Uh, I'm writing out, based on the event, there's a few properties we can get. There's e client x, x, page x, and screen x, and then the same for y. Now, x and y, they are just aliases for client x and client y, and this is actually the property that we want. Now, we can use either one. We can use x or client x. We're going to get the same thing. This has to do with the viewport. So, if we look at the browser, my viewport is the white space right here, the background for the body. That is my viewport. If we look at the next one, page, that includes, if we scrolled, so if I had a whole bunch of content here, let's zoom way in, so my content is now off the page. If I scroll up and I clicked here, clicking here will give me one value. Here, we'll uh, clear out the log, and I'll click down here. Okay, now here's the console logs for the Y values. This first two, this is the client X, and this is the X, or sorry, client Y and Y. So they tell me within the viewport how far they are down from the top. This one is the page. So it's not just the viewport, it's also this part that we scrolled away from at the top. And then the last one is screen. So within the screen, how far down are we? Now, like I said, X and Y, these are probably the ones that you're gonna use. You can use client X, client Y if you want to. Clearing highlight is a function that I have just to loop through absolutely everything on the page that has that class and remove that class from all of the elements that have it. That's just going to clear out my highlighting so that we see the brand new stuff happening. All right, so there's our information. Now let's take a look at the first one. Element from point. This is the singular, so it's going to give us one single element and I'm passing in the X and Y where I clicked. That will return for me the element. So if I click on a paragraph, this should be a paragraph. If I click on the H1, it should be the H1. So zoom back out here, click on this one. There we are, it's highlighted. Click on that one, click on this one. So using the X and Y coordinates, I'm getting the element that I clicked on. If we change this here, go down to the next one where we're using the plural version, with elements, this is giving me the whole stack. Like I said before, it's going to give us 
the paragraph, the main, and the body, all three levels, or the H1, the header, and the body. So save and come back. I click on this one. Here we go. The yellow on the H1, the red on the header, the blue on the body. We'll come down here. Yellow on the paragraph, red on main, blue on the body. And as we go around, we're clearing out the highlighting and then adding the class to the element that we clicked on. The final one, carry position, works almost the same as the first one. We just have to be a little careful because the element that we click on uh, very likely is going to be text. So when we call carry position from point and we give it the x and y coordinates, this is going to give us back an object, a carry position object, which has two properties inside of it. One is the offset node. Basically, this is the node that you clicked on. Now that could be a text node. So we can't add CSS to a text node. We have to add it to the parent element. So we're checking to see, okay, is the node type of the node that we clicked on three? Meaning, is it text? If it is, we're gonna get the parent element and that's gonna be the thing that will go to the class list and add that. And then the other property, so we had the node, the other one is the offset, and that is the position inside the text where the cursor is. So if we click right in the middle here, there we go, 15. That was the carry position. Here, 32. If we go down near the end of this paragraph, there we go, 261. If I come up here, there we go, position 10. Click right in front of that eye, 9. Now you may think, well, 9, why is it 9? I clicked right at the very beginning of the text. And that is because it is actually counting the number of spaces. If we come back up in here and we look at these paragraphs, from here to here, there's actually eight plus one, nine spaces before the actual visible characters begin. There's nine characters of white space first. So you have to be careful about that when you're working with the carry position. And that's our three methods. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I'll have a link down in the description to the code gist so you've got your own sample of this to work with. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.